Hello and welcome to Taking Flight with me. My name is Mike Rocket Blackstone. Uh, today, I will be discussing uh, an air show incident that occurred on Sunday, October 20th at around 2.30 p.m. Um, in an extra 300L at the Las Cruces Airport. And it's with a heavy heart that I report this. A fellow aviator and stunt pilot, Chuck Coleman, um, has passed away in an incident at Las Cruces during an air show, uh, the second annual air show at Las Cruces Airport. My condolences go out to his family and friends and all of those who had flown and known Chuck over the years. Uh, I have a very small connection with Chuck Coleman. Uh, he actually owns one of our extras, uh, the extra 300 L that we sold to him. It was November 51 Echo, and that is one of the aircraft that, that he uses in his, in his operation out at the Mojave Airport. I, I've never met Chuck, so I, I wasn't able to have the pleasure of meeting him, uh, sadly. So um, that's the only connection I have with him, but I am also an extra 300 pilot with a lot of flight time in that aircraft, um, doing aerobatic routines and instructing in it, loops, rolls, hammerheads, spins, forward uh, cartwheels like you saw at the air show. And um, if you haven't seen the video, I'll, I'll have a link to it. And you can see a few clips of it here. I, I, I don't want to offend anyone, but, but you can see what happened in that incident. And as I watch the video, I can see some of the, the challenges that he faced that day out of Las Cruces. Um, so let's take a look at the video now and you'll see what, uh, what we're talking about here. In New Mexico, the single engine plane whizzes upwards, gaining altitude before twirling upside down in a dazzling display of showmanship. But as the plane levels, something goes wrong. It somersaults out of control before taking a deadly nosedive. On the plane is a famous pilot, Chuck Coleman, who helped train the cast of the blockbuster film Top Gun Maverick, starring Tom Cruise. It starts here. Upwards. Zooming from altitude very low altitude along the, the runway line, appearing from east to west with a pull-up. It looks to me like he reached about five or 600 feet and uh, began a left rolling motion. So you would see it in the video with a pull-up and a left roll for a about two rotations to the left and then forward stick and right pedal to get the airplane to shoulder roll this way and which drops it into an inverted spin to the right for about one and a half to two turns and ends up in a straight down attitude at very low altitude with a subsequent pull up that resulted in a, in a, in a secondary stall there in the pull up just before impact. Um, my first thought on this, so let's take a look at it here. Down There's one, two rolls, of and a very slow the start level, into the forward. Goes wrong. In the forward, uh, let me turn this guy down here. The it's it's a pull up with a left two rolls and one, two, with a very very slow. Um, it, it pulled up and it did a one, two, and it's a very slow entry into the forward push here where it, it tucked under very, very lethargically into an inverted spin. One and a half. It just, it just didn't, wasn't, wasn't developing. And then he, I think he realized it's pretty low and it wasn't really coming out the way he'd hoped and the nose dropped. Uh, and once you're committed in this straight down attitude like this from low altitude, you are committed. And there's no other, other recovery out of this thing other than to build the speed and fly out of it. Now, what, wh I have a little bit of experience in the desert. And what I find is the desert is not the friend of, of aviation. Uh, high altitude and high temperatures are the enemy of, of piston-powered and all aircraft, but especially piston-powered aircraft. And as I go to the uh, foreflight, I pull up Las Cruces, it's KLRU, and it shows that the field elevation is 4,457 feet. That's its, its altitude above sea level. That's a pretty high airport 
on on its best day. And uh, as I pulled up the weather from Las Cruces on Sunday at 2.30 p.m., it showed a high uh, at the, around that time of around 78 degrees. And that doesn't seem like a very warm day, except when you're at that high of an altitude like Las Cruces. I ran the density altitude app on my, uh, on my phone and I put in 78 degrees, the dew point of 48 from that same data from, from Sunday's historic weather and uh, put the 44, 57 foot field elevation barometric pressure, which I also had, which was 2564, which was a low pressure that day. And it came, came up with a density altitude of 11,955 feet. That should make your uh, hair on the back of your neck stand up. When you hear that high of a density altitude, um, you know that that airplane cannot perform at its, at its best. And especially at a low altitude situation, low field elevation. So what, what, what it, I've done a, a couple of air shows in, in primarily in, in the last few years um, in a Marchetti. I didn't do it in an extra 300. And my, my altitude restriction was only 500 feet. So I did not have the zero altitude waiver to go all the way to the surface as Chuck obviously was performing at this air, this air show and many other performers. If you fly a lot of air shows, you can get your waiver to go from a 500 foot restriction to a 250 and down to a zero altitude. Um, the danger cr goes up exponentially as you increase the, uh, the danger and you decrease the altitude of the starting, the starting altitude. A zero altitude waiver allows you to, no kidding, go by as low as you feel is safe, pop up to an altitude that you feel is safe and do your maneuver and recover. The danger with, with this field elevation situation of 44, 57 and a density altitude of 11,900 means this aircraft was performing at the field elevation as if it was at tw nearly 12,000 feet. That kills the performance of the motor uh, and the, the wing. The aircraft is performing as if it is at a much higher altitude, three times that altitude. And as you increase your altitude in an airplane and you decrease the pressure and the density of the air going into the, into the engine, you have less and less horsepower at higher and higher altitudes or density altitudes. So that airplane may have very well been performing sub 200 horsepower, maybe even at 160, 180 horsepower. That's its first problem is that it was not able to generate that horsepower to give it the zoom or the punch that it could that it would need to get up high enough to perform a, a forward roll or a somersault or a loam shavak or a shoulder roll as as we call it and that airplane pitches up and it rolls and then they go forward stick and right pedal to get it to cartwheel and tumble and drop into an inverted spin it doesn't do it as well without as much horsepower um, so that was his first problem a it didn't get high enough and B, it didn't really do it as, as he had hoped. And once you end up this way with very low altitude, now he's got to zoom down and accelerate to get back to maneuvering speed to have enough, enough energy to pull some Gs. And there comes your next problem. At higher altitudes, the, 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 the air is thinner and the heat is making it even thinner yet. So the wing isn't performing well at high altitude. And therefore, I saw a secondary, uh, the plane started to, to snap roll to the right as, it, as the, uh, the right wing stalled in the, in the pull up as, he, as impact became uh, imminent. So the altitude and the, the density altitude and the poor performance of the airplane at that, that high desert airport really, really put this airplane in, in a high risk situation. Now, this was only the second annual air show at Las Cruces. And um, you can see why. There haven't been air shows there really in the past. Uh, the planes can't perform that well there. And, and an extra 300 is one of the highest performing airplanes in the world. Plus 10, minus 10 Gs, 300 horsepower and 1,700 pounds. Sounds like it should be King Kong at, that, at any air show. But you can see that even with that performance, uh, that of an aircraft, 
transplanted to a place like Las Cruces, uh, you'd find that that would also be not sufficient to, to perform at super low altitude, high energy. Uh, we call these pure nose low commits um, from low altitude. So when I fly my Marchetti, the, the lowest altitude I would ever consider pointing the nose straight down at the ground would be as if I was able to attain 1,400 feet, 12 to 1,400 feet, and higher the better, right? So if I can zoom up to 1,400 feet over the top before I commit straight down, I would know I have enough altitude and space to build that speed back up to recover. Something that happens at, at high density altitudes is your true airspeed is higher. Um, so the airplane is actually moving through the sky at a higher velocity, but the indicated airspeed's lower. And th that's a really weird situ situation where the plane is tracking toward the, toward the center of the earth at high, high speed, but it's not indicating the airspeed. Therefore, the wing won't perform well at the bottom as it would if we were at a lower altitude with thicker air and cooler air, it would have performed a lot better and that would not have been, been an issue. To compound that, there was a wind from the southwest at 15 miles per hour or so. So when he began his recovery, he was facing, it looked to me like from the video, I could be wrong here, but it looks like he was facing east with a southwesterly wind of 15 miles an hour up the tailpipe was, was making his recovery even harder with a tailwind. So all of those things going into consideration during uh, an incident like this, it does not appear to me that the airplane had any sort of mechanical malfunction at all. It looks to me like the horsepower it was generating was was what you what the plane could do at that altitude, which again was probably significantly less than 300 horsepower, probably somewhere in the 200 horsepower range uh, or less even. And then with the decrease in performance of the wind, uh, the wing. And then also a tailwind. It just wasn't wasn't uh, a, a a survivable situation uh, from my perspective. Now I'm um, certainly uh, open to any other uh, comments or ideas that somebody else may think of. If you guys have any other uh, possible uh, suggestions of what you think may have happened out there, um, feel feel free to leave those in the comments. If you haven't watched this channel before, um, again, my name is Mike Blackstone. My call signs Rocket and uh, you, you're welcome to follow me on this channel, on the Air Combat channel, or as on the uh, other channel that I have, which is called Taking Flight with Rocket. So with, with that, I appreciate you watching. Uh, stay tuned if, uh, for, for other incidents that come up, and I'm happy to share my uh, 30 years of flying of aerobatics with you. Uh, keep on watching. Stay safe out there, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.